Hey guys, and welcome back to another Tech Guru video. So in today's video, I'm going to do a really fun video that I've been wanting to do for a long time now. It's how to create a comic book effect within Photoshop. So as you can see here, I've got this nice image of this lady here in a comic book effect. And you can see here, this is the normal image before all of the uh, effects were added to it uh, in order to create this nice little comic book panel effect here. So if you're wanting to know how to do that, stick around, follow these steps, and you will be good to go. So let's go ahead and go back to the original image. And the first thing that you're going to want to do is cut out the image or the model or whatever it is that you're using that you want to create the effect around. So in this case, I'm going to select my lasso tool. Depending on what image you're using, you can select them any way you want. But I have found that the lasso tool uh, is the easiest thing for me to do. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward now uh, to where I have it selected. All right, as you can see, I have it selected here. Again, this is a very rough selection. Uh, if I was doing this uh, for myself, I would definitely uh, clean it up a little bit and definitely get the selection to be a little tighter. But for the purposes of this video, this will work just fine. So once we have it selected, we're going to want to duplicate the selection. In order to do that with uh, the selection there highlighted, uh, what you're going to want to do is hit Command or Control J, depending on if you're using a Mac or a Windows. So once you do that, as you can see there, layer one has now been created down here under my layers panel. That's going to be the selection that we just selected, okay? So what you're going to do now is possibly rename that layer if you want to. So I'll rename it image, whatever, just so I can keep track of it when I'm going and adding effects to different things so I don't get confused. Always name your layers, put them in folders if you can. Uh, just click up the work and makes it easier for you uh, once you get further along in the process. So now that we have done that, what we're going to want to do is create a new adjustment layer, okay? So in order to do that, go down here to this little half circle there uh, and make it a solid color adjustment layer, okay? And change that solid color to white. So once we have that solid layer created there and change the color to white, you can click OK. Now what you're going to want to do is bring the white layer below the model. So change the image, okay, the little selection that we just made and drag it to be above the color adjustment layer that we just created. All right, the next thing we're going to want to do is to convert that into a smart object. So right click on that selection there and then go up to where you see convert to smart object. This is going to allow us to do the effects that we're going to want to do. Now we're going to want to change the levels of that selection to be about 130, 140. You can choose, again, all of this is kind of rough estimates. You can adjust these numbers to be what you think uh, is the desired effect that you want to get. All right, and in order to get to the levels of this image to adjust them, you can do one of two things. You can go down here and select right here uh, where you see the adjustment layer and then go to levels by selecting it here, or you could have that layer selected and go Command or Control L, depending on if you're using a Windows or a Mac. And then once we've done that, we're going to want to change the levels to be, like I said, around 130. I just like to go in here and double click and just type in the desired number that I want. And then once I have that selected and, and type down to 130, We'll just click OK. Now, the next thing we want to do is go up to Filter and then go to the Filter Gallery. Now, basically what I like to do is zoom out here so you can see your whole image if, if that's what you're wanting to do. And then go down to where you see Artistic and then select Poster Edges under Artistic. So it'll be Artistic and then Poster Edges. And then once you have Poster Edges selected, and then you're going to want to change the edge thickness to be about 8 uh, and then the intensity to be two and then the posterization to be about two as well and then once you've changed that and played around with that and got your desired effect you can select okay and then that'll start changing it and it's now starting to look a little more like a comic book effect you can kind of see some progress here and then once we're done we're going to want to select the custom shape tool all right so now we're done with our filter here we're going to go down here to where you see the shape tool and then go down to select the custom shape tool uh, so basically now what we're going to do is we're going to drag out a speech bubble uh, of course what would it comic book effect be without a speech bubble. So go to where you see and can select the different shapes up here and then select the gear icon. And then if you go down here, you'll see something that says talk bubble. So if you don't already have those bubbles there in your shapes, you can go and click on the gear icon and then select talk bubbles. Now we can choose whichever one we want. 
All right, and once you've selected your speech bubble, I'm going to use a thought bubble. In this case, uh, go ahead and drag it out to uh, the appropriate size that you want it to be. Uh, and then once you've done that, you're going to want to change the stroke and the feel of this uh, thought bubble here to make it look a little more like a comic book effect. So under fill, go up here to where you see the fill layer and then choose whichever one you want. I like to use maybe this light blue color here uh, and then change the stroke to be whatever you want it to be. Uh, normally black or white is going to be the best case scenario, but if you're using a thought bubble like I am, I would probably think that maybe a nice white color uh, would do great, but you want to change that stroke to be really, really thin. You don't want it to be too big because it kind of takes away from it. Uh, so again, you can choose black or white uh, as far as the stroke goes. Uh, we'll go ahead and go back to black here. All right, and then once you have your speech bubble the way that you want it, you can start typing in some text. So I'm going to go ahead and type in some text here uh, and then drag that text uh, to be over kind of right here where you see the thought bubble. All right, and then once you have your speech bubble the way that you want it, we're going to add a little background color effect is going to be the next thing that we're going to do. So go down to where you see the new adjustment layer and then go to solid color, just like we've done before, and change that to white, and then go ahead and click OK. Now we're going to want to convert that new adjustment layer to a smart object. Again, all you need to do to do that is right click on that layer and then go to where you see create or convert to smart object. So now we have that converted to a smart object. And then we're going to go back to the filter gallery by going to filter and then filter gallery, just like that there. Now we're going to choose the sketch options here and we're going to select note paper, okay? And then under note paper, you're going to want to change the image balance to two the graininess to 17 and the relief to 17. Again, you can play around with these numbers and to get the desired effect that you want. And then click OK. The next thing we're going to want to do is change the blending mode to be multiply. So it should be set to normal. Change that to multiply. And then we're going to change the opacity of that down to about 55, maybe 60, uh, maybe around 57. So as you can see there, we have a nice little layer above that now, giving it that grainy tint uh, as far as the layer goes. The next thing you're going to want to do is create another new adjustment layer, solid color, just like the other one. So go ahead and select solid color. And in this one, you're going to want to choose like a yellowish orange color. Um, so this one here will work fine, uh, but you can play around with these colors. This is basically just for the tint of the color. And then once you're done, change that blending mode to multiply, just like we did the other one. And then change the opacity of this one way down to maybe 13 to 15. I like around 17 or 18 to kind of give it that nice color effect that you see there. Now the last thing we're going to do is add a border around the entire image to give it that comic book pain. If you've ever read comic books, you know it's pain to pain, uh, and then you have certain images within those specific panes. We're going to go ahead and make it like we have our own pain here. What I like to do is select the shape tool once again and go to where you see the rectangle tool and then make sure it's exactly in the left hand corner. And then again, like I said, if it, if it doesn't work, if it you know doesn't fit, go ahead and keep trying until you get it exactly the way that you want it. And I'm going to fast forward here until I get this drawn exactly the way that I want it. All right, and as you can see here, I have the nice rectangle drawn around the entire image here. And then we're going to want to change that fill color to nothing, as you can see here. And the stroke color needs to be changed over to white. Now, you can adjust the stroke size depending on how thick you want it to be. Normally, I go around 15, so 15.88 is kind of what I have here. And then to really give it that nice fine touch, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to right click on that rectangle or that shape in the layers option there. And then and go to blending options and then once you're under the blending options go to where you see stroke so go ahead and add a nice stroke to it and then add a black colored stroke maybe right around I'd say 25 to 27 and then click OK to give it that nice little black inner stroke there. So as you can see there guys, that's our finished comic book effect. Uh, as you can see, all of the different things that we've added. If you have any questions on how we did that, put those in the comment section below. I'll get to those as soon as I possibly can. And uh, don't forget to share this, like this video. It does help me out. Subscribe for more great content just like this guys. And as always, thank you so much for watching my videos and I will see you guys in the next one.